Hello, Note Performer 4 is finally out. If you don't know what Note Performer is, it's a playback engine that works within Sibelius, Finale, or Dorico. It basically makes your scores sound amazing using a lot of AI and stuff in the background. And really, I feel it is the way forward instead of using something like Sibelius Sounds, although it is debatable if it's better than MuseScore Sounds. Muse, yeah, MuseScore Sounds, I think I got that right. And now we have the fourth edition and what are my initial thoughts? I've been messing around with this for probably about an hour now. And I don't know. So for those of you who have got Note Performer 3, it's a free upgrade. They like to, well, it's right there at the top, make a big deal of that. Although <laughs> it almost feels like a gimmick. Um, the actual Note Performer itself, the playback engine itself, doesn't sound any different different I feel and I'll give you an example so I quickly did a recording of one of my scores using Note Performer 3 and then I did it using Note Performer 4 and this was the result. So at least in my opinion, I didn't really notice any difference at all with the playback engine itself. There doesn't seem to be any update. If there's one little thing that might be there is they might have tweaked the dynamics a little bit better. Um, it flows a little bit more, at least that could just be my ears, but that's one thing. I, I don't know if that could just be me, um, but I'm definitely going to listen a bit more closer to the recordings that you've just seen uh, to double check that. But the main thing with Note Performer 4, the big thing, is this idea that you can use third-party VSTs in this engine now. And actually, it's quite good, although I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed because there's this big thing about this free update, right? But you actually have to pay in order to use them properly. And I'll show you what I mean. So if we click on Note Form 4, this quick guide to basically all the new stuff, it now says you can use these multiple sample libraries. What I mean by that is if we actually quickly move back into here, so there's now a little plugin or an app that you open and you can pick what engine, playback engine you're using, which includes BBC Symphony Orchestra by Spitfire Audio. So the professional version, the core version, Berlin Orchestral Berkeley Edition, and then you've got uh, the Cine Series for Contact, Cinematic Studio Series, Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition, the Iconic Sections and Players from Steinberg, Nucleus, and Syncon Prime. These are the only things at the moment that will work as a third-party VST within Note Performer, nothing else. So unless you have one of these products, I would not recommend you getting Note Performer 4. Uh, if that's your intention, is to use a third-party plugin in it. I know MuseScore 4 currently can kind of do it. I did a whole video on that. I'll leave a link in the description. So these are the things that will actually currently work. And even then, if we go back over to the internet, they say at your own risk. So they're not quite, I don't know where it says it exactly. I definitely saw it somewhere. Ah, uh, here it is. Uh, deep sample libraries piece together thousands of samples, some with artistic flaws. You will encounter inconsistencies. Sample libraries on music production tools, timing dynamics are only approximate. Um, so it's a bit quirky, but from what I've seen, it actually works rather well. My qualm is the fact you have to kind of pay for these. They think they say this big thing, free update, but look down here. You can try all playback engines for free in an unlimited number of one hour sessions with limitations. So the sounds will only unload after one hour. Well, sorry, the sounds will unload after an hour. So you have to reload it up. You cannot mix and match libraries and you can only save, not load templates. And audio exporting is muted. So technically you can't export it and then send it off. 
and stem exporting is disabled as well. So there is this whole thing with stems. But if you want each playback engine, it's going to cost you 69 to 89 dollars per playback engine. So if you just want, I think if we go back over to here, so for example, this one here, the one I'm going to be showing you an example of, if I wanted to buy this, it's $89 but it would only work for BBC Symphony Orchestra Professional, which you've already paid up to, what, £899, and then you've paid, I think it's like $120 or £114 or something for Note Performer 4. So you're racking up about £1,000, and then on top of that, you've got to pay another $89 for the actual engine itself. So you're in the thousands. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, like, I get it. This obviously wasn't easy to do, um, but still, it's like, I don't even feel you can really use it to its fullest, personally. Uh, I don't think you can, not as much as you could in a DAW, and if you really are set on a score and scoring in notation software, not in a DAW, maybe use this, but then you're like a thousand pounds down like I don't know I'm having mixed feelings this is not going to be the only video I do on this this is more of an initial reaction and my initial thoughts and kind of looking into it and um, getting to grips with things but another thing I've noticed and you might actually see it right here at the bottom how much CPU and memory I'm actually using and they do do a huge warning which I'm really glad they did because it's so true um, we want you to know that this big thing right here it can take up to 50 gigabytes of RAM. And if we skip back over here, you'll notice it recommends you have 64 gigabytes of RAM on your computer and fast SSD drives as well as either an Intel i5 or an Apple M1. Don't know how an i5 is gonna hold up because my i9, I'm not gonna say it struggled, but it was using about 95% of my GPU, sorry, CPU, not GPU, when it was loading everything and it didn't glitch it does say it can glitch slightly when it's loading you just kind of leave it and, and i did um and it worked fine but it does say you need a powerful computer and so on top of buying about a grand's worth of software and not including already having to buy sibelius which is what 250 500 pounds ish or finale which i can't remember how much it is and then dorico so you probably want a grand and a half and then maybe like a two three grand computer so you <laughs> The prices are really stacking up, and at this point, you're like, come on, what is $89? Um, especially if you've not got, like, Logic Pro X or another DAW of your choice. But really racking up the um, the monies here. What I will add is they've done a really good job on explaining everything, it would seem. Um, there's so much information on here that kind of describe how to do little bits and bobs. There's the whole thing about slot actions, and that you can... I think mix and mess with the microphones a bit. I haven't messed with that a little bit too much, um, but we're gonna try it out. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. There's EQ, there's advanced settings, and they've got so much information here uh, to kind of talk about different things. You've got this little mixer, which is rather interesting as well. Um, but that's, I think, for Finale and Dorico, not specifically Sibelius. Sibelius has, I don't know, I want to say almost an outdated um, sort of mixer. They give the full list of library compatibility chart. There's, of course, demos, um, but lots and lots and lots of information there. I think we can leave the internet bit for now because you really want to see what's actually going on within the software. So this is it. As I said, we return to home. These are all the compatible libraries. Uh, nice little bit of settings at the bottom here. Also gives you reverb time, change hall noise, uh, export size, export stems, which is really nice. It's very intuitive. And I've loaded kind of a mock pro, which, well, pro version of BBC Symphony Orchestra, which my trial is probably gonna run out quite quickly um, because I've been in it for so long. But yeah, 38 gigabytes of RAM, even though my computer has 36. Um, so I'm a little worried there. I don't know how accurate this is um, because, is it 36 or 32? Sorry, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. And my computer is telling me I still have eight free. <laughs> and that note performer is only technically using eight gigabytes of RAM. So I'm curious to see how accurate that is. I don't know, we'll see. So let's 
return home. Let's go back to my current template. So you can see what I've actually loaded. Um, and you can see if I click on mix one, you can change the mix up, change the instrument family, uh, change for all instruments. Okay, that's really nice and really intuitive. You can mute it. It will like show you a live little mixer sort of thing. Well, actually like you can see their little volume things when it's actually working. Uh, you can select the different mixes. You can select what specific stave this is connected to. If you want four staves, six staves, one stave. Uh, if you want to go more into the settings, got this little arrow here. You can have the stereo width, early reflection, late reflection, and you've got the whole EQ. There's advanced settings and you don't actually have to kind of worry about these too much and I didn't really have to tell it what to do it kind of automatically is signed stuff it's actually a really easy process but right now you're all probably dying to hear how does it actually sound in comparison um, one thing I would note this piece if we actually move this off the screen for now uh, has a piano. The piano that we will be hearing is actually the note performer piano because BBC Symphony Orchestra doesn't come with the piano. I really wish it did, but it doesn't. So you're going to be stuck with the note performer piano. Um, the timpani actually works. I say timpani, sorry, it's a bass drum, works really well. Um, you've got this I say trill here, the little roll, it does trigger the roll. I've noticed the articulations are actually quite accurate and with the dynamics as well, um, it's very clever and it's very good. Although, what I'm intrigued to kind of compare ultimately is how does this stack up, this BBC Symphony Orchestra Pro version of this playback stack up against me doing it in Logic Pro X. I've already got a copy of this piece which I've done in Logic Pro X and so we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of how does this sound with all this intelligent technology is that $89 gonna make it sound better than what I can do in my DAW with this um, I guess the perk of me doing it myself as well I know that I haven't used all of just BBC Symphony Orchestra I've used a mixture of other samples I have as well so let's hit play and see how it sounds. So there you have it. That's kind of, I guess, a mix of all of them. And ultimately what sounds better and what's best for you is up to you. I can only give you my opinion. And my opinion is this is awesome. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. After all said and done, this is extremely clever and not an easy task to do. Musical 4 tried doing it and it didn't quite work. It kind of works but not as well as I feel this works and you can't tweak it as much as I feel or as easily as you can with this. Although really we are comparing something that is free against something that is at this point very much paid for and you do have this very intuitive system. Um, don't ask me how you are actually listening to that piece without me paying for it. Um, <laughs> do not try that at home or export it um, without actually purchasing it. 
all the articulations, everything seemed to work really well. The legatos were nice. Yes, there was like things like the piano that weren't quite there. You don't quite have the same mixing and mastering control as you do in a DAW. And I still, still feel like you are limiting yourself uh, from the full potential of the actual software, especially with something like BBC Symphony Orchestra Pro, where you can really get into the nitty gritty within your DAW and program it yourself and get those articulations and velocity things exactly to how you want it. But for somebody who's maybe not as familiar with that sort of thing, uh, who really does like sticking with notation software, maybe this is for you. <laughs> The actual changes between Note Performer 3 and Note Performer 4 are really this whole playback engine, this thing right here. This is basically what you're buying, is this. Um, the actual playback engine itself sounds the same uh, as an actual Note Performer, but the fact that you can stick other things in and the fact that they've gone away and done things specifically, I don't know if they've done it in conjunction with the companies themselves, or if it's something they've done themselves, they probably had to have done something with each of these companies to get these where they are. Um, I don't know if it's copyright or anything, but it's cool, I think it's great, I think it's the way forward. If you were to buy every single one of these, you're probably gonna be what, in the hundred, probably nearly a thousand. How many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, but you're looking at five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars per for everything. Um, and is it worth it? I don't know. It's it's very early stages, and I'm I'm very intrigued to see where this goes. I'm excited for what's happening. Whether it's worth purchasing now. It's hard to say. Um, I still recommend Note Performer as a playback engine. Whether I would suggest actually buying any of these, um, I'm between a rock and a hard place, in all honesty, because I, I highly recommend if you're going to write it and if you really want to write it in a note performing soft, note performing in a notation software, go ahead, write it in Sibelius, write it in Dorica, write it in whatever. But if you want, an amazing sounding score. If you want to sound like a Hollywood composer, export it, put it into a DAW. If you've already purchased these samples, you're already invested, learn how to use a DAW, work with the sample, work with the library where it's supposed to be, and then get some performers, friends that are violinists, it doesn't matter, record, put those recordings on top of the VSTs. With this, you are limiting yourself and limiting the software, I feel, at the moment. I think eventually we'll get to the point, and I think people even put this in the comments about artificial intelligence, and you know, that's quite a big thing these days, but I think we will get to the point where you can do things like this, notate it, and it will sound better than anything. But right now, honestly, yes, it sounds good. But personally, I prefer my own take on this piece, um, because yes, I can mix multiple different libraries, and I can mix and master how I want, and I like being an integral part of my piece. I know how I want it to be exactly. The AI is good, don't get me wrong, but it's not quite there yet. And don't get me wrong, this is super cool. I like what Note Performer are doing. Keep going, especially if somebody from Note Performer is watching this. Guys, this is awesome. Thank you. Um, but I'm waiting for 4.2 or 5. Um, in all honesty, I'm not going to be purchasing any of these um, simply because I prefer what I can do myself within Logic Pro X. I feel like this will be limiting me. And I really like Note Performer as a playback over Sibelius sounds or Musical 4 sounds. I don't know, that's still debatable. But what I can do in my own DOW is more, um, takes more time. But I, I don't know. Uh, if it was free, I'd probably go ahead. Of course, I would download it. But $89. Uh, it's going to put off a lot of people. I think that's the point. But anyway, this has been my take. There will be more videos following when I probably do a bit more in depth uh, and go over different engines and how they sound. Um, and again, it is unlimited free trials, so you can mess around with this. You know, they, they've not exactly locked you out of it completely. Um, but I'm rambling now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful and at least given you my insight on this update. More to come.
But thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.